Hello there, this is John with Heroes and Legends, and today we're going to do a Fate Reforge set review, uh, starting with the white cards in the sets. And at the time of this recording, Fate Reforge will be coming out this Friday uh, in stores, and this weekend currently is the pre-release, so some of you may have had a chance to go hands-on with some of these cards already. Uh, but today we're going to talk about the white cards, and throughout the course of the week we're going to work on getting some videos out for the other colors, so hopefully by Friday we'll have the uh, entire set review completed for you and definitely in time for game day. With uh, out any further ado, let's talk about the uh, first card in the set review and that's Abzan Advantage. And it's a white card and a colorless. Target player sacrifices an enchantment and then can bolster one. Bolster one is a new mechanic which is uh, showing up as the new Abzan mechanic in Fate Reforged. If you remember in Cons of Tark here, uh, the Abzan had Outlast, and these two me mechanics actually go very well together, so it's going to be exciting to see how they interact in a limited environment together. Um, to give you a little idea about Bolster, basically it says choose a creature with the least toughness among creatures you control and put a plus one plus one counter on it, and that's for Bolster 1. If it was Bolster 2, then it would be two plus one plus one counters and so on. So to talk a little bit about this card in particular, uh, this card itself is targeting enchantments. Probably going to be a decent sideboard card in in limited. It's not going to be something you're in a main deck necessarily. Now, if your opponent's playing uh, some enchantments or some strong enchantments, then yeah, you're going to go ahead and sideboard this card in. The bolster effect is a nice bonus, uh, but it's not going to be a card you're going to always be using. The next one is Abzan Runemark. It's white and two colorless, and it's an enchantment aura. Enchant creature. Enchant creature gets plus two, plus two. An enchanted creature has vigilance as long as, as you control a black or green permanent. Enchantment auras in general, I try to steer clear of. Uh, the worst thing that can happen to you is you go ahead and play a creature maybe on turn two. On turn three, you go ahead and put this on the creature, and then it gets destroyed by a kill shot or something of that nature, and you go ahead and you get basically two for one. And a lot of enchantment auras open you up to that, that possibility. The only time I really get open to using some of these is if they're either cheaply costed or I have a good wrap strategy or a protection strategy that's going to hopefully allow me to get a lot of damage in quickly um, with a really aggressive strategy. But I try for the most part not to go near these. There are some enchantments and we'll see as we go that are pushed a little more and it's going to be a little bit different. But for the most part, my rule of thumb personally is I try to try to steer clear of these. I feel a lot of times enchantment auras are trap cards. Uh, this one in particular kind of feels like a trap because not only are you getting the plus two plus two, but also to get the vigilance, you also have to have a black or green permanent in play, which is very conditional. Uh, next one is Obzan Sky Captain, and it's one white and three colorless for a 2 2 flyer. And when Obzan Sky Captain dies, bolster two. So this card is interesting. It's a little painful to be paying four for a 2 2 flyer. However, I will say, those of you who have had a chance to play a lot of cons at Tark here, you know that there's a lot of board stalls. Evasion is premium when it comes to this set, and I think that's going to continue in Fate Reforged. So having a 2 2 flyer. 4-4 four, four is not necessarily a terrible thing in limited here. Uh, when it comes to the ability, uh, the bolster ability, that's a nice bonus. Uh, there's a chance though that it could be a board sweeping ability that gets this creature or else you might not have another creature when it dies. So you don't want to necessarily say, well, I'm paying the extra mana, mana because of the bolster ability. In reality, that may be a blank when the time comes. So is it good enough to play in limited? Yeah, I think it is. I think evasion is that important. However, having said that, it's going to feel a little uh, painful to play a 2-2 a two, two for 4, but I, I do think it is good enough in this, in this environment. Uh, next card is Erishin Cleric. It's uh, one white, one colorless. When Erishin Cleric enters the battlefield, you gain three life, and it's a one three. Uh, these cards are cards, again, uh, that don't really appeal to me. There is a sideboard strategy here if you're playing against aggressive decks or decks with a lot of small creatures where this card was going to start to make more sense and maybe sideboard it in at that point, but it's not something I'm going to main deck in my limited deck. Uh, it's just not strong enough, and especially in the cons of Tarkir environment, and Fate Reforged environment, I think it gets outclassed very quickly. 
Next one is Avon Skirmisher, and it is a 1-1 one, one flyer for one. These cards, 1-1 one, one flyer, flyers for one, aren't necessarily exciting, uh, but it is evasion, just like we talked about a moment ago, that that can be important, especially if you have some combat tricks to go along with it. So uh, there are certain decks that will want this in limited, uh, not all decks, and it might it might not always make the cut, but I think there is a, there is a time and a place where you're going to go ahead and main deck this, in your in your deck you might not be super happy about it but there are times when it's going to make sense channel harm is the next card and that's one white and five colorless for an instant prevent all damage that would be dealt to you and permanence you control this turn by sources you don't control if damage is prevented this way you may have channel harm deal that much damage to target creature this is this is good removal this is something i'd be more than happy to play in sealed or in draft it's a little bit pricey uh, but that's what removal is costing these days, six for a lot of it, unless unless it's some of the really strong premium removal. Uh, this is going to take out your, your opponent's best creature. It's going to give you a fog effect and maybe even a chance to crack back. Uh, it's an exciting card. It's definitely strong, uh, very, very, very good card to play in limited. Citadel Siege. Uh, two white and two colorless for an enchantment as Citadel Siege enters the battlefield. Choose cons or dragons. If you choose cons, at the beginning of combat on your turn, put two plus one plus one counters on target creature you control. If you chose dragons at the beginning of combat on each opponent's turn, tap target creature that opponent, that player controls. So this is an interesting card because when I look at this, I see two white mana, two colorless mana. So it's four mana, two on color for an enchantment. And I hate that normally. I, I never want to be the person who has to play a four mana card and that's my turn, and I pass the turn and give it back to my opponent. And maybe if I'm lucky, it doesn't get blown up, and I get some value out of it. Uh, this card, however, I'm going to say is pushed enough that I feel like I would take the risk on it, especially if I'm playing a strong Obzon strategy. And you look at the cons portion of it, and getting those extra plus one, plus one counters in the Obzon strategy with Bolster and with Outlast is pretty exciting. Uh, it's powerful enough, it's pushed enough that I'm going to take the risk on it. And then, on top of that, it has the versatility that if you are behind, you have the ability to tap down your opponent's best creature. So it's it's a little deceptively scary on the surface, but when you start to get into it, I'm going to take the risk on this card. I think it's actually a pretty good limited card. Next one is uh, Degatar the Adamant, and he costs one white, three colorless. Vigilance, Dagatar the Anima enters the battlefield with four plus one plus one counters on it. And he has an additional ability of paying one and two black or green to move a plus one plus one counter from target creature onto a second target creature. Great card for limited. You're going to play him and be happy about it. You got a four four Vigilance for four. That's fantastic. His extra ability, if you are in those colors, is a nice little bonus because now it's going to make profitable attacks and blocks for your opponent very difficult. You have the ability, if you have mana open, to manipulate some of the counters, especially in an Obzon strategy, and you're going to be definitely coming out ahead of those interactions. So a very strong card. Just him being on the battlefield, his presence can keep your, your opponent from attacking at times because of the fear of some kind of manipulation that you may have with the counter. So very good card. I'm uh, very excited about this one in limited. Dragon Bell Monk, one white, two colorless. He's got Vigilance and Prowess, and he's a 2-2. Now, Prowess, of course, is the Jeskai a mechanic that is returning from Cons of Tarkir. So we've seen that previously, and it continues in this set. Uh, this is an interesting card. You're paying three for a 2-2, Vigilance and Prowess. Now, it trades with a morph unless you have a trick to get the Prowess to work. It's it's difficult, though, because you could have been playing a morph, too. So you have to kind of make that decision what's more important. Now, the, the upside to him is he can attack with a Vigilance, and he can block, and it, you can even bluff with the with the Prowess, perhaps, to keep some morphs off your back or maybe get in for a little damage early on. Uh, if, other than that, he doesn't have a whole lot of upside. Two twos are going to get outclassed very quickly in the Kanzatark here environment. And he does trade with a morph. Maybe that's a good thing, though, and you can get a, a stronger card off the board early. Uh, just interesting card, though. There's there's definitely a place for him. He might not be a windmill. I'm putting him in my deck, but uh, but there there's definitely a place for him in limited. 
Dragon Scale General, one white and three colorless. At the beginning of your end step, bolster X, where X is the number of tap creatures you control. And he's a 2-3, so, or I should say, she's a 2-3. So, interesting, uh, you're paying 4 for a 2-3. That doesn't feel good. However, the, the, the power's strong enough. Uh, if you're playing a lot of small creatures and you're getting in there to attack, here's your opportunity to go ahead and get... Uh, a, gets value out of that interaction and it's it's a very strong card and also she's a warrior which has other interactions she interacts well with other cards in the set uh, so very strong card definitely something i'm going to play now if i don't have a lot of small creatures i might reconsider throwing her in there if i don't feel i'm going to get the value but for the most part i think in white in white limited you're you're going to be using this card if you have it in your pool uh, next one is the elite scale guard and she's one white four colorless uh, for 2-3, when Elite Scale Guard enters the battlefield, bolster 2. Whenever a creature you control with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it attacks, tap target creature defending player controls. And this is huge. I was just talking about the synergy with the previous card. This is amazing synergy with the previous card. So, uh, so now you're getting the plus 1 plus 1 counters and you're tapping down the your opponent's uh, creatures when they attack. Now, you look at this card, you're paying 5 for a 2-3 that's pretty ugly but at the same time if you have the small creatures and you have the obzon strategy going this is a fantastic card and if you have the synergies with other cards this is phenomenal so it can be a really it can, could be a powerhouse i think in limited the, this type of strategy next card is great horn Krushak, one white four colorless for a three five vanilla beast creature and these cards exist because we have new players and we need to introduce them to the game and cards like this are great for that and they will always exist and they should exist and here they are and you're probably never going to play them uh do you have a bad pool sometimes and sealed and you end up playing this guy as a number 22 or 23 yeah it probably will happen it won't be a good day but it'll probably happen so uh so he's there he exists <laughs> Uh, next one, Honor's Reward. Uh, one white and two colorless for an instant. You gain four life and bolster two. Again, if I'm not playing against a super aggro burn deck, I'm probably not too concerned with the life gain. Um, if I'm looking for more bolster cards, it might make my deck just because of that ability. So the bolster two strong enough that that alone might be worth throwing it in your deck. Uh, the gain life, maybe not as important, but there's going to be times where it is important. So at the very least, it's going to be a, a decent sideboard card and limited. In some cases, during uh, some decks, you're going to have uh, some strength just main decking that. Next one is Jeskai Barricade. And for one white and one colorless, you get a 0-4 creature. And it's a wall with Defender, of course. And it also has Flash. And when Jeskai Barricade enters the battlefield, you may return another target creature you control to its owner's hand. Very good card. I, I like this one a lot. It gives you some depth, some strategy. You can protect your creatures. Premium is, a, I'm sorry, removal is a premium. So you do have that situation where someone has draws that one removal card and you have this to counter it. It's pretty exciting. So I like this card. I'm going to play it in seal. I'm going to play it in, in draft. A fantastic limited card. I uh, really like the versatility and, and the cerebralness behind this card. Light form, two two white and a colorless enchantment. When light form enters the battlefield, it becomes an aura with enchant creature. Manifest the top card of your library and attach light form to it. Enchanted creature has flying and lifelink. <clears throat> uh, this is the first time we've seen manifest, so I'll read that as well. To manifest a card, put it onto the battlefield face down as a two two creature. Turn it face up and any at I'm sorry, turn it face up any time for its mana cost if it's a creature card. Uh, so a few things about manifest quickly before we talk about light form. Uh, it, it's a new mechanic. It's kind of the Fate Reforge version of Morph in a way. Uh, however, a couple things about it. When you when you manifest a card face down from the top of your library, uh, you can flip that card if it's a creature for its casting cost, or if it's a morph creature, you can flip it for its morph cost as well. If it's not a creature, then it's probably going to stay face down unless there's some sort of other bizarre interaction out there from a, an eternal format or something that's going to let it use flip it or use it so the 
card, it's the the manifest mechanic itself. I I find it a little interesting that they went ahead and used it in this set um, where it's going to be interacting and mingling with morph morph creatures because there's a little bit of rules interaction and confusion that could occur with that so um, imagine you play some morph cards you play some manifest cards if you don't keep good track of which ones are which and they do give you the tokens to do so but if for some reason you do get confused and it's time to you say end the game and you flip your morph cards to show that they are morph cards if you get those confused with your manifest cards you may have some manifest cards that aren't necessarily morph cards could cause you to lose the game if that interaction isn't tracked and expressed the right way so um, you know, it just feels like an odd sort of thing that doesn't necessarily need to be an interaction in limited where a lot of new players are getting involved uh, but we'll see how it goes and if it really does or doesn't cause any issues uh, as far as this card goes <clears throat> I just got done saying how I don't really enjoy enchantments or auras However, this card's push. This is a really good limited card. Um, when it enters the battlefield, you do go ahead and take the top card of your library and, and manifest it. And it becomes a 2-2 flying lifelink creature. And you don't have the downside of getting two for one if, you, if it gets destroyed. Just because that creature came from the top of your library, it's almost like drawing a card. So a uh, very good card. And you end up with a strong creature and maybe even something you can flip later i i really like this a lot this is this is a fantastic enchantment for limited next one lotus eye mystics and it's one white and three colorless for a three two uh, he has prowess when lotus eye mystics enters the battlefield return target enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand you're only going to play him if you have some good targets for him so if you have two or three flicker or um, i'm sorry two or three light forms uh Absolutely, this is a card you're going to want in your deck. Now, if you don't have the targets for for him, you don't really want to be playing a form for casting cost three two, especially again in this cons environment where you have a lot of large creatures and you have morph creatures. You basically will trade for a morph in most cases, uh, so he's not stellar in that regard. But if you have if you have the enchantments that you want to recur, absolutely, this is going to be a great limited card for you. Um, Mardu War Reaper, uh, one white, two one. When Mardu War Reaper or another warrior enters the battlefield under your control, you may exile target creature card from a graveyard. If you do, you gain one life. And this is one of those cards that is a sideboard card that's going to hose the Dell player. So if your opponent, after you play game one, you realize is playing black, green, or blue, guess what? You're going to want to sideboard this in and kind of disrupt that, that Delve strategy. And that's all it's really good for. The life gain doesn't mean a whole lot, but, but I like this card. I like that it exists. I like that it's a great limited sideboard card. You know, you have things out there in in constructed that are better graveyard hosers so don't expect this to work its way into legacy or modern or or even standard probably but uh, but i'm glad this card exists i think this is a, a good limited card mastery of the unseen one white one colorless and it's an enchantment whenever a permanent you control is turned face up you gain one life for each creature you control and then it has the ability pay one white three colorless to manifest the top card of your library this is an interesting one because early game this is a blank this is doing nothing for you the life gain is pretty inconsequential for the most part however long game if you get this out and you have some mana to sink into this and you're you're putting down eight mana a turn to, to get two 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 creatures this all of a sudden becomes a very good card so it's going to it's going to be contingent on your matchup if you are in a situation where you feel you're going to have board stalls after game one then this probably wants to come in to help you get past those board stalls it's not necessarily going to be in every limited deck or every time you play white but that definitely has its place in a lot of situations interesting card monastery mentor one white and two colorless and this is a mythic rare two two and uh, he has prowess whenever you cast a non-creature spell put a one one white monk creature token with prowess onto the battlefield very strong card this is in limited yes you're gonna play it uh, you're gonna draft him high you're going to put him if he's put him in if he's in your sealed pool and you're playing the color uh, fantastic card you get prowess you get the 2-2 you get the token generators and the tokens have prowess and very quickly if you have enough 
non-creature spells, and that's, remember, not just instants or sorceries, but artifacts and planeswalkers or, or anything that's not a creature, right, um, is going to go ahead and buff not only him but those tokens. It starts to feel almost like a storm mechanic uh, feel to it. It's it's very interesting. Uh, having said that, it's, it's going to be a definitely a limited bomb. It's going to be... Uh, a card that I think in standard some people are going to try to build around. And, it, and I don't know if it's going to be huge in standard, at least not yet. I, th I don't know if we have enough non-creature spells that are that are big enough to make this card something you can build around. But perhaps when the next few sets come out, it might become stronger. Uh, the, the card in eternal formats... Uh, I don't think it's going to replace Young Pyromancer. I think Young Pyromancer is going to hold its spot as the token generator just because it's a little cheaper and it's going to keep that vintage legacy modern uh, over uh, a card like this. So so very interesting. Definitely though some also casual implications. I could I could certainly see this card being used in, in a commander deck and singleton. So um, I think this is a card that's going to have a lot of potential. <clears throat> Next one is Pressure Point, one white, one colorless. It's an instant. It's a tap target creature, draw a card. Not an exciting card by any means, very straightforward. Um, it does its job. You might need it, so it's a card that may, maybe you play a one, uh, one of in your deck, uh, but probably nothing more than that. Next one, Rally the Ancestors. Two white and an X for an instant. Return each creature card with converted mana cost X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Exile those creatures at the beginning of your next upkeep. Exile Rally the Ancestors. This is a strong card. If you're playing a lot of small creatures, this gives you that sort of quick bonus to bring them back to either go in for a big strike or defend yourself against a big strike and then maybe crack back. So, uh, very good combat trick. Uh, excellent, excellent if you if you have enough creatures and enough small creatures in your in your limited deck. Sage's Reverie. This is a one white, three colorless enchantment aura. And enchant creature. When Sage's Reverie enters the ba battlefield, draw a card for each aura you control that's attached to a creature. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one for each aura you control that's attached to a creature. It's got the three magic words on it draw a card. So people are going to try to play this. They're going to think it's good, but I'm going to tell you right now. Steer clear. This is a trap. Uh, an enchantment aura, just like I said previously, is, in itself opens you up for two for ones. On top of that, in a limited environment, what are the odds you're really going to get a lot of value out of this card? There's a lot of contingencies to it. I don't see this being in standard. I don't see it being in, in most constructed formats. It could have a home in a commander deck that has a lot of synergies around enchantments or auras. Uh, the decks that play uh, play play multiple uh, pants on creatures, those type of decks, yeah, it's going to fit perfectly in there, you know. So it has a commander or Highlander home, and I think the art would look beautiful in foil. I think that's the purpose of this card. Uh, so don't let it fool you. It, it does have a purpose, uh, but you don't want to put it in most your limited or constructed decks. Sandblast, one white and two colorless. It's an instant. Uh, Sandblast deals five damage to target creature, attacking, I'm sorry, target attacking or blocking creature. And this is strong, strong removal. In limited, you're going to want this. You're going to want multiples of this. Uh, it's going to destroy most threats. Not all, but most threats. Uh, it's very good, very good limited removal for white. Uh, Sandstep Outcast, one white and two colorless. Uh, he's a 2-1, and when he comes into play, you can put a plus one, plus one counter on him, or you can put a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature with flying into play. His first ability isn't super. It's going to give him, make him a 3-2 three, for 3. Again, in this environment, he's going to trade with a morph creature. Uh, not fantastic. Much like the 1-1 one, one flyer we talked about earlier, however, though... There is sometimes a place for that evasion. If you have enough combat tricks, that 1-1 one, one flyer might be important to you. So not for every deck, not for every situation, but if you're desperate for some evasion, he might be a limited go-to card, uh, but not probably high on your list. 
Soulfire Grandmaster, one white and one colorless, and this card's gotten a lot of buzz already when it was spoiled about a week ago, so I'm sure many of you have already heard of it, but um, she's a 2-2 with lifelink, and instant sorcery spells you control have lifelink. Pay 2 colorless, and then 2 either red or blue for her ability, which is the next time you cast an instant or sorcery spell from your hand this turn, put that card into your hand instead of into your graveyard as it resolves. We'll talk limited first. Um, yes, play it. <laughs> Fantastic limited card. You're going to be happy with it. 2-2, two, two, lifelink, and you may have a couple instance or sorceries, a couple direct damage spells that early game buy you a little life. Late game, they don't only buy you life, but you can reoccur them. That's awesome. This is a fantastic card. Uh, standard. How does this fit into standard? I don't know if this is going to be the card that breaks standard or anything like that. Uh, I don't know if there's enough strong instant or sorcery spells, and also the cost to reoccur them might be a little tight. So mm, it could find a home, especially if we see some more good instant and sorceries come out of the next couple sets. You may see some more uh, potential to play her in standard. However, she's still going to be good in standard, and she's still going to be good in the right decks. Uh, where it gets scary, though, I think you start looking at perhaps legacy, perhaps modern, where she could have different, more powerful interactions. However, I will say this. I don't think she's more powerful than Snapcaster Mage. I think Snapcaster is a stronger card. But one thing that does scare me a little bit is she, she is mythic. And, I mean, imagine if Snapcaster was printed as a mythic rare. Who, who knows what value Snapcaster would be at right now. Whenever you have a card that's going to be sought after by players of many different formats, and it's a mythic, and it's cheaply costed, I get a little nervous, because I feel like that could spike the price, and if the card does tr truly end up being good in multiple formats, then you're going to have a situation where a lot of new players may get frustrated because of the cost of entry into those formats. So, uh, you know, I'd like to see... I like to see mythics be kind of big, flashy cards, big, splashy ones that are, are legendary in many cases, or planeswalkers. To me, that makes sense. But when you see economically costed cards with such power behind them, I get a little nervous. So we'll see what happens as we go into the next couple months. You know, hopefully nothing uh, bad will happen with her pricing. <laughs> Next one, Soul Summon. Uh, one white, one colorless for a sorcery. Manifest the top card of your library. And this is your showcase card for Manifest. This is how you teach your new players how to manifest. And it's a pretty good card. Uh, you know, if you're paying two for a 2-2, two, two, it's better than three for a morph. Uh, and you may or may not have the morph ability, I understand. But uh, this this is still pretty decent. You know, I, I'd play one or two of the, these in my limited deck. Valorous Stance. One white, one colorless. It's an instant. Choose one. Target creature gains indestructible until end of turn, or destroy target creature with toughness far greater. Fantastic card. I'll tell you, this is a bomb and limited. This is some premium removal. Now, doesn't destroy everything. Uh, it doesn't destroy the smaller creatures. However, you have the versatility of making one of your creatures indestructible, which could be removal for a smaller creature if you block so very interesting card i really like it a lot i think this is going to be i mean this is huge and limited i think this is going to be a standard white's standard removal in this in, in the standard environment uh for for a while to come a uh, really good removal card uh, very very strong Wandering Champion, one white and one colorless, and she's a 3-1. Whenever Wandering Champion deals combat damage to a player, if you control a blue or a red permanent, you may discard a card. If you do, draw a card. So so she can loot. Looting's awesome, right? Uh, yeah, looting is awesome, but this card isn't. Uh, she's 3-1, and she costs you 2. She's going to, I'm going to say it again, trade with a morph. Uh... And the thing that's really painful about her is she's blue, she needs blue or red permanent, even for the looting effect to work, and she has to damage a player. And in this environment, she's not going to get through very often, and when she does get through, you have to have one of those permanents in play. 
it's going to take so many resources to make you, make her go off once to loot. It's just not worth it. Um, this is a trap, I think, and this is the type of card that you're going to read the looting mechanic on it, and you're you're going to throw it in your deck if you're not careful. But but carefully read the rest of the card because this is something I would certainly steer clear of. And last card, uh, Ward Scale Dragon. It's two white, four colorless, for a four-four flying dragon. As long as Wind Scale Dragon, I'm sorry, Ward Scale Dragon, is attacking, defending player can't cast cast spells. You're paying six for a 4-4 four, four flyer. That's fantastic and limited. Uh, you got the evasion piece. This is awesome. Uh, you're going to play this. You're going to be happy with it. Uh, you're going to draft it. You're going to put it in your sealed pool. Uh, it's it, And it even has the extra bonus that uh, if he does attack, he can't be killed by cards such as kill shot and things of that nature. So a uh, very good card, a uh, very solid limited card. So having said that, that's all the white cards for Fate Reforged. So thank you for uh, going through them with us. And I think uh, just to give you guys a little bit of an idea of what we're hoping to do with Heroes and Legends, we do want to add a lot of video content and bring a lot of stuff on for you all, so we're definitely open to suggestions. Uh, some of the things we would like to to showcase are, of course, Magic the Gathering, talk about reviews and spoilers and, and those type of things, but also uh, comic books, entertainment, uh, training card collectibles, sports collectibles. So let us know what you're interested in. We're open to some different things, and I've, I I have a lot of different interests and enjoy talking about them with you. So um, so thanks a lot, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Have a good day.